The Secret to Clear English Speaking It was a rainy evening, and Emma, a twelve-year-old girl with sparkling brown eyes, sat by her window. She loved reading books, but she had a problem. Every time she spoke in English, her words didn't sound right. Her pronunciation was off, and she often mixed up sounds. The kids at school teased her, and she didn't know what to do. But one thing she knew for sure, she wanted to speak English clearly, and she wasn't going to give up. One day, Emma found an old book on her bookshelf. It was titled, The Master of Clear Speaking. She had never seen it before. Curious, she opened it, and the first page read, Do you want to speak clearly, with perfect pronunciation? Practice these exercises. But remember, patience is the key. Emma was intrigued. Exercises to speak better English? She thought to herself. This could work. Just as she was about to start reading the first exercise, there was a knock on her door. She jumped up, startled. Who could it be? She wondered, her heart beating fast. When she opened the door, she found her best friend, Leo, standing there with a huge grin. Emma, I've got some exciting news. I found this cool English-speaking app, and it lets you listen to how words are pronounced. Emma's eyes lit up. Really? That's perfect timing? She exclaimed. She quickly grabbed her phone and downloaded the app. The two friends sat together, practicing word after word. Poole! Leo tried to pronounce play with exaggerated sounds, and they both burst into laughter. It was funny, but also a little frustrating. I still don't get it, Emma groaned. I want to speak like those people on TV. How do they sound so... perfect? Leo, being the playful boy he was, decided to make a game out of it. Let's pretend we're news reporters. We have to read everything clearly or we lose points. Ready? They spent the next few hours pretending to be famous news anchors. Emma's confidence grew, but she still felt like something was missing. The master of clear speaking book caught her eye again. There had to be something special about it. Later that night, Emma sat on her bed, flipping through the book once more. The second chapter was titled, Listening is Key. She started reading, and the more she read, the more it made sense. To speak well, you must first learn to listen, the book advised. It explained how listening carefully to the way people spoke could help her understand how words should sound. Emma remembered her favorite show, Adventures with Scarlet. The characters spoke so clearly. That's it, she thought. She decided to spend the next week listening carefully to the characters on her favorite shows, imitating the way they spoke. She practiced in front of the mirror, focusing on how her mouth moved. Pronunciation, she whispered, making sure every sound was clear. But there was a twist to the story, something Emma didn't expect. One evening, while Emma was practicing, she received a voice message from her cousin Rachel, who lived in London. Rachel's English pronunciation was perfect like the people on TV. Emma quickly opened the message and played it. Emma, you've got to practice with me. I know how hard it can be. Let's help each other. Emma was shocked. She never knew Rachel had struggled with English, too. Rachel was just like me, she thought. The suspense was building up. Could Rachel's method be the missing piece Emma needed? The two cousins began sending each other voice messages every day. Rachel would send a tricky sentence, and Emma would repeat it back. It was tough at first, but Emma kept practicing. If Rachel can do it, so can I, she told herself. 
Days turned into weeks, and Emma noticed something incredible. Her pronunciation was improving. The teasing at school stopped, and her teachers praised her for her clear speaking skills. She felt more confident than ever. But the real twist came when Emma was asked to give a speech at the school assembly. She couldn't believe it. This was her chance to show everyone how much she had improved. But could she do it? Could she really speak in front of so many people? The day of the assembly arrived, and Emma stood nervously backstage. Her heart was pounding. What if she messed up? What if her words didn't come out right? Just then, she heard Rachel's voice in her head. You've got this, Emma. Just listen carefully and speak clearly. She took a deep breath and stepped onto the stage. The room was silent. All eyes were on her. Emma opened her mouth and began speaking. Every word was clear. Every sentence was smooth. She nailed it. The audience clapped, and Emma couldn't help but smile. She had done it. She had mastered the art of clear speaking. But the real surprise came when her teacher handed her a note after the speech. It read, You've just inspired a whole new class of students. Keep practicing, keep improving. Emma couldn't believe it. Her journey, filled with funny moments, twists, and suspense, had a happy ending. And the moral? With patience, practice, and a little help from friends, anything is possible. Even mastering English pronunciation. As Emma left the stage, Leo gave her a thumbs up and shouted, You nailed it! They both laughed, and Emma felt proud. She knew there would always be room for improvement, but this was just the beginning of her journey to becoming a master speaker. And from that day on, Emma helped others with their English pronunciation, just as Rachel had helped her. Because in the end, speaking clearly wasn't just about words. It was about confidence, persistence, and believing in yourself. Emma's success in the school assembly spread like wildfire throughout her school. Kids who once teased her now asked for her help. Emma, how do you say this word? Can you help me with my speech? It was a funny turn of events, but Emma enjoyed helping others just as Rachel had helped her. Every afternoon, a small group of students would gather in the library to practice with Emma. They called themselves the Pronunciation Squad, a funny name that made them all laugh but took their learning seriously. Emma taught them the same techniques she had used, listening carefully, practicing in front of the mirror, and speaking with confidence. There were a lot of funny moments, like when Leo tried to pronounce puzzle and ended up saying poodle. Everyone laughed, but they didn't give up. One afternoon, as the pronunciation squad was practicing, Emma's teacher, Mrs. Baker, approached them. I'm impressed with what you've done here, Emma, she said with a smile. How would you feel about starting an after-school program to help even more students with their English-speaking skills? Emma's eyes widened in surprise. Really? Me? But I'm still learning myself, she said, a little nervous. Exactly, Mrs. Baker replied. You're not just learning. You're mastering it, and you're helping others do the same, and that's what makes you a great teacher. Emma felt a wave of excitement and nervousness at the same time. But just like before, she remembered Rachel's advice. You've got this. So, she nodded and agreed. And so, the Master Pronunciation Club was born. Every Tuesday and Thursday after school, Emma led the club. Kids of all ages came, and they practiced everything from basic words to longer sentences. There were fun tongue twisters, dramatic readings, and even some light-hearted competitions. 
Emma made sure it was always fun, with plenty of twists and surprises to keep everyone engaged. Leo, of course, was the joker of the group, always ready with a funny mispronunciation to lighten the mood. But then, just when everything seemed to be going perfectly, a new challenge appeared. One day, Mrs. Baker announced a school-wide public speaking contest. Emma knew this was her chance to shine, but there was one big twist. Every student had to give their speech in front of the entire town. The pressure was on. Emma had come a long way. But this? This was a huge deal. She could feel her confidence wobble. The suspense was building up again. Could she do it? For the next few weeks, Emma and her club practiced harder than ever. They worked on their speeches, pronunciation, and how to deliver words with confidence. But even though Emma was helping everyone else, she couldn't shake her nerves. What if she messed up? What if she forgot everything she had learned? The night before the big contest, Emma sat on her bed with her speech in hand, staring at the pages. The words seemed to swim before her eyes. She took a deep breath and picked up her phone. She knew exactly who she needed to talk to. Rachel, Emma said when her cousin picked up. I'm scared. What if I can't do this? It's so much bigger than the school assembly. Rachel's voice on the other end was calm and encouraging. Emma, remember what you've learned. Speaking clearly isn't just about the words. It's about confidence. And you've got plenty of that. Remember how far you've come. You've practiced. And now it's time to believe in yourself. Emma smiled. Rachel always knew just what to say. The next day, Emma stood on the stage again, but this time it was much bigger. The whole town had gathered, and the auditorium was packed. Emma's heart was racing, but she remembered Rachel's words. She took a deep breath and stepped up to the microphone. For a moment, the room felt like it was spinning. The suspense was unbearable. Then, she opened her mouth and began to speak. Slowly at first, but with each word, her confidence grew. Her voice was clear, her pronunciation was perfect, and her heart was full of belief. The audience was silent, hanging on to every word she said. And when she finished, there was a moment of stillness before the entire room erupted into applause. Emma had done it again but the biggest surprise came when Mrs. Baker took the stage after her. Ladies and gentlemen, she announced with a grin, we have a winner. Emma, congratulations on delivering the best speech of the night. Emma couldn't believe her ears. She had won. The town cheered, her friends rushed to congratulate her, and even Leo shouted, I knew you could do it, Emma with his usual playful grin. Later that evening, as Emma sat with her family, Rachel called to congratulate her. I knew you had it in you, Rachel said, and now you know it too. Emma smiled, feeling a sense of peace and accomplishment. She had come so far on her journey to mastering English pronunciation, and along the way, she had discovered something even more important. The power of persistence, the importance of believing in yourself, and how helping others along the way can make the journey so much more rewarding. As Emma looked out her window at the starry night, she knew this was just the beginning. She would keep practicing, keep improving, and keep helping others do the same. After all, Learning to speak clearly wasn't just about pronunciation. It was about finding your voice and sharing it with the world. And so, Emma's story of mastering English pronunciation 
filled with suspense, twists, laughter, and a few bumps along the way, became an inspiration for kids everywhere. The moral of her story, with patience, practice, and a little bit of courage, you can master anything, even something as tricky as English pronunciation.